grace to you and peace in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. It is Wednesday, and I'm standing here in our sanctuary, which is intentionally located in the heart and soul of the beautiful and very resilient Heartside neighborhood. We've been walking through different prayers from our hymn book to begin our short daily devotions. And today, uh, we will draw from a prayer attributed to Julian of Norwich. We have heard from Francis of Assisi, Catherine Siena. We're going to get to Martin Luther on Friday. Uh, But here is uh, a prayer connected to the mystic, Julian of Norwich, which ends with, I think, some familiar words. Let us pray. In you, Father Almighty, we have our preservation and our bliss. In you, Christ, we have our restoring and our saving. For you are our mother, brother, and Savior. In you, our Lord, the Holy Spirit, is marvelous and plenteous grace. You are our clothing. For love, you wrap us and embrace us. You are our maker, our lover, our keeper. Teach us to believe that by your grace, all shall be well, and all shall be well. In all manners of all things, all shall be well. Amen. I think it's one of those great statements of faith. Statements of trust, all shall be well, all shall be well, in all manners of all things, all shall be well. But I also like it here in this prayer, God, please make all things be well. Please make all things be well, in all manners and all things, please continue to make all things well. So with that prayer from the mystic Julian of Norwich, we turn to our daily lectionary text from John uh, 21. And this is the story, one of the stories of Jesus appearing to the disciples post-resurrection. Here in this case, they are up fishing in the Sea of Tiberias. They are struggling and catching fish. Simon Peter is there. The disciple whom Jesus loved was there. And uh, Jesus standing on the beach, kind of watching the, the disciples uh, labor in vain to catch that fish. They're about 100 yards off, think about a football field, so they must have all been shouting to hear each other. But just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach. Uh, they didn't know it was Jesus at that point. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. Jesus said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land only about a hundred yards off. I, there's a lot going on in that little short text. There's some more about Simon Peter and his relationship with Jesus, certainly. Um, but today I just, I love the, the excitement um, that we find in, in Simon Peter, that incredibly complicated relationship that uh, he and Jesus had. Um, but there was always excitement. There was always passion. Sometimes he He jumped into that passion a little too quickly. And sometimes that passion um, caused greater fear and and worry. But time and time again, Jesus kept coming back, kept inviting Jesus, uh, inviting Simon, Peter, to to be drawn back into the the gift of discipleship and the responsibility of discipleship, of of casting nets, of, of loving others, of... Uh, announcing to the world that, uh, that the tomb is empty and that Jesus truly lives, which is the excitement that we also get to embrace. 
It's not always Jesus on the beach kind of giving us instructions, but his voice is still there through uh, these words, through 2,000 years of the church uh, proclaiming such faith, of the church singing the hymns and um, continuing the story in embodied ways of caring for the poor, the vulnerable, the widows, the orphans, of us realizing that there is something truly marvelous about living life to its fullest because we've got Jesus there inviting us to keep casting those nets and keep living in the abundance of the catch that we find through grace, through mercy, and through peace. It's a great story. Love to have that kindled, rekindled, uh, re-energized excitement of Peter to be our excitement for continuing the work ahead of us, continuing to love our neighbor, to continue to love our God, to love ourself, to keep casting the nets, and to keep kind of meandering through this moment, realizing that all shall be well, all shall be well, in all manners and all things, all really shall be well. Have a great day. God's peace.